Good morning. Good to be in God's house this morning. It's good to see everybody. Hope everybody had a good blessed week. Do we have any prayer requests this morning that need to be announced before we go to the Lord in prayer? Kathy's under the weather. You miss Kathy. Yeah, we miss Kathy this morning. Brother Aubrey, would you hope to serve us with prayer, please? Yes, he will pass, will pass over you. Chiefest of sinners, Jesus can say, as he has promised, so will he do. O sinner, hear him, trust in his word. Verse 3, judgment is coming, all will be there. Who have rejected, who have refused. O sinner, hasten, let Jesus in. Sad if you don't let Jesus in. Verse 4, our gift. Oh, what compassion. Oh, boundless love. Jesus hath power. Jesus is true. All who believe are safe from the storm. Oh, he will pass. will pass over you. How wonderful. We're going to sing that song, When I See the Blood.
far as announcements this morning, remember Axel Rickard, Sister Shirley's great-grandson with several health needs, Jackson Hughes, bone marrow transplant, Sister Joy's brother, Clark's family, Sister Wanda, Paula Bradley, serious needs, remember Jonathan Street, Michael Davini, Joy Rumsey, Kathy's daughter, Bubba Tummins, Charlene Bradley, Sandra, and Jonathan Hurt, and Brother Doug. Jonathan has recovered. Well, <laughs> I didn't know that. She didn't know that, Linda. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Remember, Sister Linda and her family are leaving Friday to fly out west. And one thing about it, Linda, y'all y'all will be together. And if you crash, y'all will still be together. <laughs> I've never been that high. Well, you're going to go higher eventually. Yes. Uh, we got new pocket directories of the church family and friends are in the foyer. Remember tonight's service, with Brother Aubrey, bring somebody with you. Wednesday night at 6 o'clock, Brother Doug. We missed Brother Doug last Wednesday night, but we had Tony, and Tony done a fantastic job. <laughs> Next ladies' meeting date will be discussed. Southern Gospel Singers United Concert at the Open Bible Assembly, March the 8th at 7 p.m., featuring the Liberty Boys, the Commonwealth Quartet, and the Kent Curtis family. If you're able, try to be there. I guarantee you'll get a blessing and you'll enjoy it. Uh, Brother Larry, would you and Brother Grayson come up and take the offering? You can take your daddy's place this morning. Dear Lord, we thank you for another day. We thank you to be in your house this morning. We are so blessed with all these that are here this morning. We ask blessings on them. Lord, we ask blessings on this offering, Lord, to better serve you. Jesus, we ask you to be with us this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs> from Brother Tommy this morning. It thanks, says, thanks to each one of the wonderful messages you are sent me by card. My daughter-in-law is writing this for me. Again, to each and everyone, thanks. Pray for me, Brother Tommy. This morning we got a birthday. She probably ain't thought about it, so she's probably going to be surprised. But this week is Faith's birthday, so let's... <laughs> 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 Let's all sing happy birthday to her. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Only one will not do. Take the plan of salvation. Then you will have to. Happy birthday. Brother Caleb, you ready?
injured there. Thank. I thought number one would surely be me. I thought I can be who I wanted to be. Thought I could build up on life sinking sand. But I can't even walk without you holding my hand. Can't even walk without you holding my hand. The mountain's too high and the valley's too wide. Cause I can't even walk without you holding my hand I thought I had done a lot on my own I thought I could make it of myself as a mighty big man but I can't even walk without you holding my hand can't even walk without you holding my hand the mountain's too high and the valley's too wide down on my knees I learn to stand cause I can't even walk without you holding my you hold in my a city over yonder not made with human hands a place where no heartache will ever trouble me a poet a great author could really describe all the beauty that's waiting inside. Oh, what a city! What a land! On the hills of Zion, I know I'll stand. Dying and no more pain for us 
for the sun there For its light would be too dim Compared to the glowing That shines, shines within For the lamb slain on Calvary Shines much brighter than the sun For all God's children Who've overcome Oh, what a city What a land On the hills of Zion I know I'll stand gone to prepare Oh what a city He's gone to Brother Caleb, I was just thinking the other day we hadn't heard from, heard you sing in quite a while, and I was wondering about that. And lo and behold, I really enjoy hearing you, and it's a blessing every time. It's good to be in God's house this morning. It's a good number this morning. There's still a lot of people out sick, uh, so many, and uh, we want to uh, keep those in our prayers. And any visitors we might have, we appreciate you being here this morning. We're going to be in a. Uh, 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 the gospel of uh, not in the gospel we're going to be in Romans again uh, still speaking on the Holy Spirit and we're in chapter uh, 8 again uh, and we're going to start off with verses uh, 17 and 18 it's a beautiful Lord's Day hard to believe we're already into March it's just uh, wow uh, I've always heard the older you get, the faster the time goes. That ain't no kidding. <laughs> I think next week, if I'm not mistaken, the time changes. So uh, I'll be looking forward to that. I like that extra hour in the afternoon of daylight. Uh, being an outside person gives you a little more time to do. Oh, uh, well, I uh, hope everybody's turned there. Uh, we're going to try to get through the remainder of this chapter. We still got a oh, a little while left on the Holy Spirit. Not sure how long, but uh, we have, we're into the part where we're seeing what the Holy Spirit is doing for us in our lives uh, uh, in this this uh, week and the next week or two out. So let's look at chapter. I mean, verse 17 and 18. It says, uh, and if, ch if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and join heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be, be also glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Let's go, Lord, prior to time. Our Father in heavens, we come to you, Lord. We thank you so much for being able to be in your house. We thank you for your blessings, your watch over us. We pray for, Lord, each and every one here today. Uh, we pray, Lord, you, uh, Heavenly Father, bless them from on high. If there's one here lost and undone, they would come to know your Son, Jesus, as their Savior. Before it is too late, we pray for those who are sick and not able to be here, touch and heal according to your will. 
Lord, we do pray for our nation this morning and our leaders, Heavenly Father. We pray that repentance, with Lord, would be uh, uh, come to be front and center in people's lives. Uh, Lord, that uh, people might uh, turn back to Thee. And we pray, we do pray for Israel, God, that uh, You would continue to watch over them and protect them, as we know You will, Father. But and we pray, Lord, and we thank You for the church. We thank you for all those that come this way. We thank you for the prayers, Lord. We uh, 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 we know that people are praying. It's very important to us. We feel the need of prayer in our lives always. What's over us now? Forgive us for we failed you. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. We remember uh, these verses last week. Before we start really getting into this, though, I want to uh, uh, reveal something to you that... Uh, uh, you know, I get little tidbits along all the word that uh, really and probably not Bible relevant, but uh, uh, I, I get something out of them, and, and I hope other people do too. Uh, you know, I've, I've, I've often, I don't know if you've heard me say it, I know you have, I'm sure, uh, that uh, Jesus uh, uh, maybe was from, uh, from the south part because there's times we use in the south more than anywhere else, and people. Uh, some people kind of, I've had people kind of poke fun at me a little bit for uh, for the way I speak and the words I use and stuff like that. And uh, yonder being one of them, uh, I've had, where is yonder, you know, just, uh, you, where is that? You know, people kind of poking fun a little bit. And, and uh, but then I have to remind myself, Jesus said yonder. So uh, if that's a southern term, what does that, uh, you know, say? And uh, also, uh, um, we find that um, Abraham said yonder when he was taking Isaac uh, up to be sac for the sacrifice, he said, I'm going to go over yonder. And then I find out this morning when we're singing that that's where heaven's at. Heaven's at. How do I know that? Because when the roll was called up yonder, I will be there. So, you know, I'm not uh, ashamed of the words I say. But now I see, uh, the reason I brought that out, I see another word here that I use quite frequently. We use, I don't know, if, I don't think other people do, but it's not uncommon for us to say, uh, reckon it'll rain today. And, uh, the, and the person we talk to say, well, I reckon. And then if you look right here, Paul must have been born in South Tarsus, where he was, because he says here, in verse 18, for I reckon that the sufferings of this uh, present time. So, you know, every word to me in the Bible, see, if you got these new Bible versions, you might have missed that. And you wouldn't have got to call all this uh, uh, stuff I was telling you here that is really not have to do with the message, but it does lend to our heritage, which we're not ashamed of by no stretch and never will be. And we uh, pray that people will continue to know the history of our nation in its entirety and not try to cut parts of it away. Uh, I probably shouldn't have said that, but that's the way I feel anyway. Now, getting seriously into this message, and Paul, we remember uh, that uh, we learned last week that uh, uh, not only is Jesus our Savior, we learned that He is our brother, and uh, that uh, uh, in verse 17 here, it says in the last part that we may be glorified together. And so uh, when glorified means the transformed and glorious Jesus, that's what it means. And uh, so after we leave this body, uh, we're going to be transformed into a glorious body fashioned like unto Christ. Uh, we find that over in Philippians 3 and 21. So uh, wherever heaven is, it don't matter to me because my Lord and my Savior will be there, the Holy Spirit will be there, God will be there, all the saints of God will be there, and we will be transformed in a new glorious body. I'm looking forward to that. We talk about uh, we're talking about suffering here, but it's a different kind of suffering in one way, and it's not in another. Now we suffer uh, from uh, different things. Some of us have suffered greatly, and some very little. Uh, physically speaking, maybe emotionally speaking, maybe spiritually speaking. Uh, uh, I know uh, I've suffered all of those things. Uh, I've uh, uh, we many times we've been very very sick and. Uh, and uh, it, you know it's a, it's a, a strange feeling indeed, but uh, 
there are, there are different times when we suffer, but we're not talking about suffering just uh, because we got uh, had an ailment or something like this. We're talking about the suffering that goes on uh, that uh, we may basically do some suffering because we're a child of God. Now, uh, we also uh, learned last week, we mentioned it, that uh, history, history proves, and not only history, but today's current events, that this world has treated God's people horrendously awful and made them uh, suffer, bleed, and die, tortured them in every way known to man, uh, and killed them simply because they are a born-again Christian. That's the only reason. Uh, uh, we know it's true. We know it still happens today. And uh, it's, it's by the hands of this world that it's all got to be done. But, you know, that, that makes me wonder. It's, I'll be honest with you. Uh, there's a lot of scripture. There's a lot of things in the world I don't understand, obviously. A lot of this word I don't understand, and I'll be honest with about that. Uh, I don't understand uh, really and truly why that uh, there are people that do suffer greatly for the cause of Christ. I'm talking about for being a Christian. They suffer greatly. And yet here I am. I've no, almost suffered none for being a child of God. Uh, very little, you know. Uh, we, we don't count uh, name calling and stuff like that. That don't even count. Uh, but the, then uh, we read here that uh, uh, you got to wonder about these things. But then Paul did say in verse 17, he said, If so be that we suffer with him. If so be. In other words, that left a door open that everybody is not uh, going to suffer the same way or suffer any at all. If it's if it's your call, if and there there are people uh, that are called for everything for God. There are people that are called to uh, teach and preach and sing and pray and witness. And I believe by this, there are people that are called to suffer. Uh, there are people that. God knows when they live their life that they're going to be able to endure the suffering uh, that, uh, that they'll be called upon to do, and that's their calling. And so that's why maybe they're where they are and I'm where I am because I can't endure it uh, the way they can. I always go to that little girl uh, that was uh, 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 killed at the school, one of the first shootings, mass shooting, and the guy just looked at her and said, I think he, if I got it right, I think he asked her if she was a Christian and said, yes, she didn't deny it, and then he killed her right there. Uh, she said, no, he might have spared her, I don't know. But the last words out of her mouth was, she was willing to die for her Lord and her Savior. Now, let's see, everybody gets called for a certain thing. Now, that don't mean, that don't mean that it ain't going to happen tomorrow. That don't mean that we, things ain't going to turn around and the things we're talking about today are affecting us tomorrow. It could happen. We don't know that. We don't know yet because we don't know what tomorrow holds. Uh, but we do know who, who is in charge of it. That's our Lord and our Savior. Now, these people inspire us. They inspire us to, uh, not to whine and complain, but to keep on moving forward for God. Uh, when we look at them, uh, it lets us know that we uh, should cherish and we, we should lift up the bloodstained banner of Jesus uh, uh, to a lost and dying world uh, because they have uh, done a, a, a huge part in doing that so that we could do what we do today. Uh, it's, all, it's all part of God's uh, uh, big plan. Um, but I'm going to tell you, nothing in this life, nothing, not one single thing can compare to one second in glory. It's it's all going to be traded for the most worthwhile one second, and we're talking about eternity and never end. Uh, so it's all going to be worth it in the long run. Uh, uh, look at verse 18 there, one more time. Notice what it says here: For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Now, if you're not careful. You'll forget, you'll, you'll run by one little thing right there that means a whole lot to me. And that last part, he said, 
which shall be revealed with, with the glory which shall be revealed in us. He didn't say to us. It's not coming. That's going to be revealed in us. So uh, God is going to take the glory of Christ and it, at a time it's going to be revealed in us, not just to us. We're going to be exposed uh, with this new body and this uh, new heaven and this new earth in a way that we can't even comprehend or imagine. That glory of God is going to be exposed in us, not just to us. Now, reading on in 19 uh, through 22, uh, we find here uh, that uh, for the earth, for the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope, because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Now that's a that is a, a, a section of the Bible, and I'll be like I said, I'm on it. Uh, I have I struggle with that just a little bit. I'll be uh, as somebody else might know it clear as a bell. Different parts of the word I read them and I read them over time and time, and sometimes God just reveals it. It's all it's being hid to me. All of a sudden, it comes it becomes so clear. And then there's other parts I'll read and study over and over, and they, and they still they're still kind of muddled to me. But so uh, that's not the reason I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because I won't get through to the other parts. But we will notice basically that all all creation is waiting. That's what it tells us here for the change to come. Uh, that, that we do know. All, and all uh, for, we know that the whole earth. The Bible tells us there's a curse upon it. It was corrupted uh, by mankind. And so uh, uh, we see uh, uh, that we are delivered from sin and Satan now, but there's, there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. And all, all we're, uh, we're basically saying here, everything we know that has existed from the creation of this time, it's all waiting for that. All of God's creation is waiting for the new heaven and the new earth, for the change to come, along with us as the children of God. Uh, so we see all this is going to happen and take place. So uh, uh, it was caused by man's downfall, but we will be restored with a new heaven and new earth. Now, verse 23 says, and not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruit of the Spirit. The Spirit, the Holy Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves waiting for the adoption to, to wit the redemption of our body. Uh, this this reminds, reminded me of something, uh, uh, here's something that we can relate to in this. He says, we are, we are waiting for the adoption to, the, uh, uh, for the, uh, to wit the redemption of our body. We're waiting. We're waiting for that. Uh, and, and we're anxiously waiting. It reminds me of a child, a little child at Christmas time. Now, uh, you know, we can, it's something I can relate to because I've always been a little child at heart. Uh, and I was a little child one time, believe it or not. Uh, and I can remember back then, better than I remember what happened yesterday. But I remember as a little child anxiously awaiting Christmas time. Uh, and uh, the little children today do, because we know what an event that's going to be. And uh, when we're, we know, we, as a little child, we know within ourselves that day is going to come, and we know it's going to be good. So what he's saying here, we're, we're waiting, we're, we're groaning within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit uh, the redemption of our body. So this is what's happening to us. And here we have the Holy Spirit uh, letting us know these things, that uh, um, what we're waiting for, and here we find that word. We know what the Spirit is letting us know, right? What we're waiting for. And it, it's revealing to us 
and it's, it's making us anxious, isn't it? It's making us want that to happen. Uh, people, uh, people are saying more and more, God's people, I'm ready. I can't wait. Uh, they're anxious for it to happen. Uh, uh, the more we see this world deteriorate around us, the more we want the change to come. But he says here uh, to the... Uh, not only there we see that word redemption again, but here it's equated to the redeeming of our body. Uh, uh, we know it's going to come. We know it's going to happen. And we're waiting for that. And by, by, by faith, by faith, we have a realistic hope that that's going to take place, don't we? We realistically know that will take place. Uh, uh, but he said uh, also as we read on, Verse uh, 24 and 25, he said, For we are saved by hope, but hope that is uh, uh, that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for it? But if we hope for that we see not, then we do with patience, then do we with patience wait for it. Uh, we were saved by hope, uh, but it, he said, if hope seen is not hope, what does that mean? If, if, I, if somebody tells me they're going to have a, or tells you they're going to have you a new vehicle parked out there, and, and you could hope for that, but if you see that, there's no longer any hope of it because it's already there. You can't hope for something you see. And uh, but and we've not seen Jesus, have we? But He's real. Uh, we have we have the hope Amen. of seeing Him one day when He comes again. Uh, he, he's going to come on a cloud. The Bible says every eye is going to behold Him. Every eye. Now, a lot of people get, and we we, uh, we can't go to that message, but. I'm big on every, and all, it's, it, it don't leave nothing out. And it says even the ones that pierced his side. And so there's a, for us there's a realistic hope. We're waiting for him to come. We know what's going to happen. But like, like that little child that can't wait for Christmas, what's the one thing that they got to do? They got to be patient. We, we, can, we can pace up and down and wring our hands or we can do anything we want to do. But we've got, Paul said it here. He says, then do we with patience wait for it. We've got to be patient. We've got to be patient. There are people that uh, are not understanding. We do it on God's time, His terms, when He's ready. He, it don't make no difference what we say, think, or do about it. It's all, it's all Him, right? It's all up to Him. Be patient. We be patient. Paul said, "Be patient." He said in verse 26 and 27, likewise, the Spirit again, the Holy Spirit, helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Uh, we know there are many, many great things about the Holy Spirit in our life, right? Uh, we're, that's what we're studying. About. Well, and one of them is uh, the fact that he is our intercessor in prayer. Now, I don't like to admit it. <clears throat> Most people don't like to admit it. But I'll be honest, if we are honest with ourselves, we're frail human beings. You know that. But we're only a heartbeat, heartbeat away from eternity. And, and we're very frail. And we're, we're subject to vanity, the Bible tells us. We've got to be on guard at all times. And we've got to be prayerful. But there's times uh, when this old frail human being, we, there's times when I, I know exactly what I want to say to God. And I know it's clear in my mind. But it still don't come out right. And I still uh, am uh, not getting my, uh, uh, the way I want to say it. Uh, to God, uh, and so uh, there's times we just don't know quite how to say it or what to say. And then there's other times in our life 
and I'm sure most of us have experienced these, <clears throat> when we are either uh, just emotionally or spiritually or physically just too weak to pray. You ever been there? I have. I've been to a point where I just couldn't even, my mind wouldn't even let me pray, much less my mouth. I just, or my heart, or nothing else. Uh, uh, it's, a, it's just a loss of words. But no need to worry because the Holy Spirit is there, he said, making intercession for us. And guess what? At the same time, in verse 28, uh, uh, it says, and he. Now, look at this close. Verse 26 says, But the Spirit itself making, maketh intercession for us. So here, here we have the Holy Spirit interceding on our behalf. But here's the way that's done. If you ever wondered <clears throat> how this takes place, this tells us. Verse uh, 27 says, And he that searcheth the heart knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit. Now it's Jesus that searcheth the heart. Where is Jesus at? Where does the Bible tell us? He's at the right hand of God, right? The Word of God. The Holy Spirit is right there in my heart, your heart, as a child of God. Interceding our prayers, and here we find He that searcheth the heart, Jesus, up there searching that heart, and he knoweth what's the mind. He knows what the Spirit is wanting to get conveyed to God. So the, Jesus searches the Spirit's mind in our heart and intercedes on our behalf and takes it straight to God in a twinkling of an eye so fast we can't even record it. Now, I thought about that for, and I thought, goodness gracious, look at all the prayers going in today. And there's still, I don't know how many Christians in this world, a lot, a lot, a lot more than, uh, than a few. Uh, you know, there he is. All the prayers, and God can hear and answer every single one without hesitation, and does, and that's just a, something this mind can't even comprehend, can it? But it happens. Every prayer you pray goes to God through the Spirit, to Jesus, to God, and God hears and answers every single one of them. How does He do that? He says here in verse 27, according to the will of God. It's got to be His will done. His will be done. Uh, and see, that's the key thing. Now we might think, well, I need it answered this way. Well, that's not maybe what's best for you. Because here's the deal. God sees the big picture. He sees beyond today. He sees beyond tomorrow. I'll give you a good example. Look at the life of Joseph. Now, Joseph, if we'd have thought about it, we'd have thought, man, what a bummer when his own brother sold him into slavery, right? That's just terrible. And so that, that just can't, that's just bad. But it turned out good, didn't it? He went to Egypt. But then it turned out bad again because he wound up in a dungeon, enslaved in a dungeon. So that turned out bad, so that can't be good. But it was good, wasn't it? Ultimately, in the end. So because uh, he rose to the rank because he was an interpreter of dreams to the right hand of Pharaoh and was second in command and God placed him there. So you see, the, the bad things that happened along the way turn out to be the good things at the end. And I'm telling you what, if it's bad all the way, so be it because it's still for God's glory. It's still going to be good at the end of the road. And that's all that matters to us. It's God's will be done. Pray always God's will be not our will. Our will is wrong. Uh, it, can't, it can't always be our way. It's got to be God's way every single time. Now, <clears throat> He has a certain purpose for every one of us, don't He? As we say, well, He's got a calling for everybody. The, the list goes on and on, and we add to that call a list of suffering. 
uh, there's a purpose for everyone. And his will in our prayer, it coincides with his big plan for us, right? For his picture down in the road. Uh, if you'll think about it, and we don't won't belabor this, but think about your own life for a minute and look back at some things that happened to you and you think, man, that was bad. But look how good it turned out to be afterward. Maybe something that you didn't think was going to be good turned out to be good. There's been events in all of our lives, if we will look and examine, that God used to help us for His glory and His benefit. That's what it's all about. Now, reading on down in uh, uh, 28 and 29, He tells us, and we know, we know that all things work together for good to them that love to God, that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. The called. That would be what the saints of God, right? Us as God's children. Now we're going to get into all the controversial verses now. Uh, verse twenty-nine and verse thirty. For whom He did foreknow, He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of God. I mean, the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. And God is saying, uh, I know some are going, this is all this is. This is all this is. That God is saying, I know some are going to accept my son, and some are not. And because that some are, I've predestined or predetermined that they're going to be conformed to His image. God knows we don't know, okay? So we can't say, well, some was set to be and some wasn't. That's not the way it is. It's all by free will choice. God gives everybody the opportunity. We all have the opportunity. Uh, these verses are misused by Christians. Uh, they carry much strife and uh, cause a lot of different denominations, especially on down in verse, like verses 38 and 39. But uh, he's just saying, I, I know how this thing ends. That's what God's saying. I know how it ends. And I know who will accept the plan and I know who won't. But it's offered to everybody. That's the key point. Jesus died for every person that they might have life and have it more abundantly. There's no restrictions placed on that. It's not pre-planned. It's not like a pre-played barrel. You go up there and you pay them and it's all said and done and it's, and it, it's all laid out. It's, it's to be done according as pre-done because God knew, but we don't know. We don't have a clue. Now, it is offered to everyone. Everyone, everyone don't accept it. But the ones that do accept it, verse 30 says what? He said they're going to be justified and they're going to be glorified. Praise the Lord. Uh, we are going to be justified and glorified. But look at verses 31 through 34. What shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Think about that. You know, that's a, that's a, that is very, very important in every child of God's life. Because even though we don't come up against maybe an actual lion in the woods going to attack us tomorrow, we come up with things in our life that seem insurmountable to us, don't we? They just seem overwhelming. They seem like, I just don't know how I'm going to get past this. But he said, if God's for us, who can be against us? That's an amazing statement right there. We need to take that with us, and we need to have that at our, at our uh, thought process where it can pop out at all times. Now, he went on to say, He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justified. I'm going to let me tell you something. Right there, we, we don't know this world nothing. Okay? Who's going to lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It's God that justified. It's God that determines that. It ain't man. 
It ain't man that determines whether we're justified or not. It's God. So we don't owe man. We don't, we don't have to bow down to man. We need to bow down to the feet of Jesus. Now he said, Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even where? At the right hand of God, oh, who also maketh intercession for us. He's already made ultimate sacrifice. He gave us His only begotten Son. And if we're under His blood, this world might kill our body, but it cannot condemn our soul. Uh, and to top it off, He said we have... Now we see we've got two intercessors. We read a while ago in verse 20, 26 where the Holy Spirit was the intercessor. Look what it says here. It is Christ that died, rather is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also, that means in addition to, right? Who also maketh a continual intercession for us. He's doing that to us. I mean, for us to God. 35 and 36, I mean, 35 through 39. As it is written, did I read 30, oh, 35? I'm sorry. Who shall, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Sister Judy, this is kind of like a Sunday school lesson. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine, famine, or nakedness, or peril, or a sword. Paul experienced all those things, didn't he? He said, so, 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 shall any of those separate us from the love of God? But he don't stop there. He says, as, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. And then he went on to say in verse 37, Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now, that pretty well covered everything, right? Except for one thing. He left out me, didn't he? He, he didn't include me. He said all these things, but he didn't say I couldn't separate myself. Now, there are preachers, I've heard preachers add me to that. They will say, oh, that includes our own self. We cannot separate. I don't see that written there. Everything but us. Everything but us is written. I don't see it say that we cannot separate ourselves. If I choose, if I choose as a child of God, I can say, I, I'm just going to walk away from God. I just ain't going to do it no more. I can choose to do that. Uh, I'm just going to live my life the way I want to. And then when people will look and they'll say, well, you just never were saved to start with. Well, then that would make them a judge, right? And who made them a judge if they can determine where I was saved or not? I'm going to tell you, you know, I'm sure, if you've been a child of God a long time, and I definitely know, and, 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 and this world knows, there have been people that have lived and dedicated themselves to God for years and turned around one day and just walked away. Now, that could be done in a day, quick, or over a period of time. They could start drifting and drifting and backsliding and backsliding. Like we said, they get that point where there's, they, they are apostate, they're reprobate, they're not turning back. They've done hit that point of no return, and they can't come back. They have been cut off. God has cut them off. And they might beg and plead, but they're not getting back. And that, that is them separating themselves. And if you'll read that close, and not only on top of that, but this is something else that I don't hear said anywhere, so it might be wrong because I've heard said, if, if I'm the only one thinking it and everybody else, it must be wrong. I don't know if that's the case or not. But notice he says here, 
Nothing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is Christ Jesus our Lord. And uh, that's true. I believe everything we just read. Uh, nothing can separate us from the love of God. But think about that. That love of God is the love of God that Jesus said, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that who believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. Now, nothing can separate people from that love. That's what he said. You, you, can't, you can't separate this world cannot separate itself from that love. That's a, that's a love that we cannot measure. It cannot be measured. I, I know it cannot be measured. The love God had for a, a hateful, lost, condemned world that He gave His only begotten Son, nothing can separate that love from this world or from us. And don't you know it breaks God's heart at the end, when he has to cast the children of disobedience and the children of wrath into a lake of burning fire, the ones he loved and gave his son for and they rejected him, the love was still there. It could not be separated from God's love could not be separated. He just says that God's Love and that love is in Jesus Christ, His only begotten Son. John 3.16 But it is possible for you and I to walk away from that love. It is. And so, if you're here today and you're lost, well, we'll come and sing a verse of a song. Are you going to walk away from that love today or are you going to accept the fact that his only begotten Son died for your sins so you can walk in the love that He wants you to walk in. While we stand together. being here this morning. Remember to come back tonight at 5 o'clock with Brother Aubrey and bring somebody with you if you would please. Brother Doug, would you dismiss this please?